Intended audience is 13 and up. Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are doing a Plastic Gen unboxing. This is a Roller Defensor. So one of the earlier Beyblades released in the life of Beyblade. Uh, this does not have a removable spin gear. Uh, it's one of the ways to sort of gauge like how old uh, it is in the Beyblade line as far as Plastic Gen goes. The really early stuff had uh, spin gears that were screwed into the blade base. A lot of the earlier Beyblades that have the fixed spin gears aren't shown in the anime. Uh, a lot of them you see in the manga or have Bit Beast from the first and second Game Boy Color game. So this Beyblade can be found relatively cheap. Uh, it's pretty common and it's pretty good competitively if you're interested in that. Uh, for compact combos, which is not a term that really carried over into Metal Fight or Burst, but compact combos are usually like really dense, small combos. Uh, the thing about Plastic Gen is that Throughout the duration of Plastic Gen, all the weight discs basically stayed the same and they're interchangeable throughout the duration of like the product releases. So you can use really early stuff. Um, well, not all of it, but some of it, you can use the early stuff competitively with like the very, very later stuff, like season three stuff, uh, which is cool. It's one of the things that I wish they would do, hopefully with the next series is less power scaling where it doesn't like isolate groups right, where you can't use older stuff. I really, like, really dislike that. Like, you end up with a bunch of Beyblades that are competitively useless, and you have to create formats that are dedicated to earlier stuff, you know? Like, Burst has a uh, classic format, which is, like, single and dual layers, and then Metal Fight has limited and standard. Uh, Plastic Gen, you don't really need to, like, delineate the different formats or whatever. You've got, you know, just plastic format, and then you've got HMS, which is technically plastic gen, but a completely different format, a uh, completely different system. So here I am uh, attaching the spin gear. The really early plastic gen stuff uh, is all right spin. So once they introduced the removable spin gear, that's when they introduced left spin. And from that point onwards, basically every plastic gen Beyblade can be swapped to left spin for the most part. So it adds like a ton of customization options over some of the other series, just because you can basically switch every Beyblade to left spin or right spin, which is pretty cool. So next up, we've got the stickers. Thankfully, this one doesn't have a ton. Some of the plastic gen Beyblades have, uh, have quite a few, not nearly as many, I think, as Burst. Burst has like, especially some of the newer ones, have a pretty obscene number of stickers like going into like 20 stickers which is uh a lot uh maybe excessively so but uh plastic gen is uh, i think one of the series that really uh it, like the stickers really help aesthetically otherwise it's just a chunk of you know plastic um it, they didn't really do a lot of like molded color application or anything like that with plastic gen i think hasbro did a couple but for the most part it was you know, it was the stickers that really um, brought out any of the details in the Beyblade, so. So the other thing that has to be screwed in to this Beyblade is the rollers, which uh, initially I actually I put on upside down, so I'm correcting that at the moment. But uh, not a ton of Beyblades after the early stuff, after the, like, the pre-removable spin gear stuff, um, had parts that had to be assembled with screws. Pretty much everything past that point was just, you know, remove it from the tree and snap it together. So I decided not to go with the bit chip sticker that it came with. Uh, none of them are super inspiring to me. They're very common in some of the later releases. Typically with Plastic Gen, you'll get two bit chip stickers per Beyblade and some of the early ones got reused a lot. So I decided to use this Koro Koro sticker that I had lying around. This is a Dragoon sticker, um, just sort of the, like the silhouette, but I thought it looked cool and it, it kind of matches the uh, the color scheme, so I'm going with that. So this does have the shorter bit chip and the bit chip protector. So in like the really early stages of Beyblade, one of the win conditions was knocking off an opponent's bit chip, which was later abandoned. The rule was completely abandoned um, after they introduced the longer bit chips, uh, which I, honestly i think is uh maybe maybe one of the things that inspired burst you know like just popping off an opponent's uh you know a piece of the opponent's beyblade to win but either way i think this bit chip sticker looks sick on this so we'll go ahead and do a quick test battle see how it does 
So we're gonna be using metal Dronzer for this battle, uh, which has a plastic flat tip, and we are doing this in the Shin TA Stadium, which uh, this is actually the, the first battle I've done in this, so I haven't had a whole lot of time to do a whole lot of testing, but uh, pretty hyped about the stadium. So Roller Defensor takes the first point here. So before anybody says anything, I am angling my launch. This stadium is brand new and it is pretty slick. So as the stadium kind of wears in, I'll get uh, probably sort of tighter control on that. But uh, yeah, overall, I think the stadium's super cool. So Metal Johnser takes a point, it is 1-1. One, one. So Roller Attacker gets that last point, 2-1. So let me know what you think of this Beyblade, guys. And hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe for future Beyblade content, and I will see you guys in the next one.